Oh, why are you staring at me? D you know what you need to do, go get the ball. Why are you staring at me? There we go. Begged me to throw the ball and then he just kind of circled the pot for a while and he's like, are you gonna get in and go get it for me? Forget your retriever, retrieve. I can't blame him for it. He just wants to play in the pool. We'll do that later when the sun's not on the water. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. The sun is very intense today. I'm liking the hard top up here on the glider, but for a decent part of the morning, the sun is too low for it. I could probably angle it down some more. Uh, I haven't tried, but it's been pretty easy just to toss a towel over there in the morning. So I don't like the sun really on me, period. Especially right on my face in the morning. This is, it's one of the dog towels. That's why there's a hole in there. Not much going on right now. Just got up, fed the dogs, playing with Turbo, doing some picking up out here. We had a storm blow through here in St. Louis last night with 80 mile an hour wing gusts that just knocked the garden away. The four pots around the pool, no problem. The Alexander palm down there, it was leaning a little bit, not too much. I probably will have already talked about all of this because there should be a garden tour video that's going to come out right before this video. I hate filming the vlog right before the garden tour because everything I film up until the garden tour, until I have that done, it scrambles my brain as to what to talk about and what spots. So I'm just gonna get to the point. Yeah, it stormed, knocked some stuff over. Those have been blowing over. It also blew over the Robolini palm, which knocked over the Moose of Florida that's over there and a bunch of other planters and the queen, like basically everything big got blown over, except for the four planters around the pool, which is great because those are very large planters be very expensive to replace those. I don't think I even could replace them. I'd have to buy all four new ones that have been for sale in a few years. All that's left to pick up are the queen palms. I've got this garden tour that's going to have to be filmed probably tomorrow and get edited. So there's a decent amount of picking up to do over here because of that storm and just other projects where things have piled up. Need to do some cleaning up. Need to run to the store because I would like to grab a whole bunch of sandbags and I literally just mean like bags of sand to pile up around the pot of this big queen palm. The bottom of the pot is warped. I would repot it, but large pottery costs a fortune these days and it just got repotted last year and the pot still has some give to it. I don't want to go spending three, four hundred dollars on a new container when it doesn't really need it but the other one does need it. And I already have a container for that one, but that's getting off onto a whole nother thing. I may end up repotting the other one that blew over, but this big one that's closest to us, it doesn't need, it's just the bottom of the pot is messed up from being moved around by the cranes and everything. So I'm thinking maybe just lots of sandbags piled around the pot, see how that works. This is normally June stuff that I'm dealing with right here. Storm season goes mid-May into mid-June and then when you saw periodic storms throughout the summer, well, all year really, it doesn't end, but you know what I mean. They're the worst that time of year. But this year, everything is just several weeks late. That's how it seems anyways. And it's just been wind and storms and uh, half the time there's no rain, <laughs> unfortunately. We could use more rain, but at least we're getting something now as opposed to May and June where we weren't getting anything. But they weren't blowing over then. The storms have gotten stronger and they're shifting up more from the south. So they're coming from a different direction. These didn't really blow over at all last year. And I was so proud of that location. So I was like, oh yeah, we finally figured out a solution to those giant queen palms in those smaller pots. But that, not this year. The winds are stronger this year and they're blown over. So I'm gonna go by the hardware store, get some sandbags. I need some potting soil. I'll poke around, have a look at the plants, but chances are there won't be that much to see this time of year. I don't know though, I haven't been in a few weeks. Maybe there will be. Come back, get those picked up, pile some sandbags around them, see if that works. And then I have some planters over here that I would like to get moved to the driveway. I don't know if I'll be able to get that done in this video. I don't know why I wouldn't. I have a whole thing I'd like to do in the driveway and make it look nice, but I don't have to do that right now. I can still get those three plants moved to the drip. Let's go run some errands. I'm gonna finish waking up, got some stuff I need to do around here and then head out to the store and see what's going on with the plants and sand. So exciting, sand. Right when it's time to go, he comes over and lays it down and just turns into an absolute sweetheart. Something I want to try and remember is that one of the nurseries around here where I bought these blue pots, I know they're hard to see. The sun is just, it's relentless right now and I'm trying not to burn. I have sunscreen on, but it's still that kind of sun where you feel it cooking your skin. Point, 
pot. This little pot right here, I have another one over there. I'd like to get two more of those, and I haven't seen them for sale in a few years, but I feel like maybe I saw them at a local nursery here that I took y'all to, I don't know, in a video a few weeks ago. Could be a false memory, I don't know, but I would like to stop by there and see if maybe they have those sometime this week, because I have a spot over here where I would like to We'll get to that when it's time to get to that. It's time to go. Turbo, I'm so sorry. It's time to go inside, baby. We'll come outside later and do some swimming. It'll be fun. Look at that. I love that teddy bear. And no, I'm not turning the AC off for audio reasons. We just have to live with it. It's hot outside. It's more humid than hot. All the lights are on. That was fun. You love when you're just supposed to get in the car and go someplace. And then your car doesn't start. That's the joys of having a teenage car. Sometimes they do these things. This thing has come in so fantastic. It has jumper cables. You plug in on the other side over here. This little flap lifts up. You hook the jumper cables into there. Put it on your positive and whatnot. Hook it up. You hit that boost button and boom. Car starts. Very nifty because I have two old cars here. There's this one, which is an 06. And then uh, the old BMW. It's a 98. Older cars, the batteries die out on if you don't drive them pretty frequently. I got these little caps that go on your battery posts. It's just a switch. Disconnect any type of conductivity from the battery when you're not using the car. And uh, I went to install them, and one of my friends who knows cars is like, yeah, I don't use those. And I'm like, well, what's the... What's it gonna hurt, right? Like, it's not gonna hurt the battery. I don't know. I went ahead and I listened to the pros on that one, but I think it made sense to me to go ahead and use them. I think I need to prune these hydrangea trees. <laughs> They're hanging over the driveway a little bit. And now I have to make sure to drive the car for a good bit to get that battery recharged. Otherwise I'd run into the hardware store, grab my stuff, get back in the car and have to jump it again. This thing does need a vacuum. If we just, is this just turned into, let's run errands with Jeff? Oh no, I flipped the camera around to show my face. I'm not looking all that good right now. Like I told you, it's humid. And I just stood in the sun for like five minutes getting this stuff done. And found out that the uh, hardwood floors, y'all didn't know if you haven't been watching the channel for a long time, been remodeling the inside of my house. I'm not doing it, somebody else is doing it. it took a long time to get them and they have to sit in the house and acclimate for, I think, one person said four days. And uh, my guy who's doing all the work in the house said two weeks. But I don't know how long they have to sit. But that meant I had to clear out the rooms. And uh, so I did that right before leaving too. So I was just like hauling gym equipment down to the basement. And weights and all kinds of things. So on top of it being hot, I just not look too pretty. It was a good workout though. A very good workout. Taking weight sets up and down, two flights of stairs. That'll give you a good burn. Before I go into the nursery, uh, right across the street is a gas station that has all those free vacuums that work great. I have a shop vac, but really these things work so much better than even my very nice shop vac. So I would like to vacuum out the car because it is disgusting from just weeks and weeks and weeks of trees and plants and everything back there. I know it doesn't make sense to do that before going to the hardware store, but the place with the vacuums is right here and the place with the sand and potting soil is back there. And the place that I need the pots from is across the street from the place with the vac. It, it, in my head, it makes sense. Is that satisfying? I hope so. Car's nice and clean. Okay. Here are the pots. They have little ones? Yes? No? They have one. I need two. I could go with the bigger size, but I don't really want the bigger size. What's this? No. Beautiful pot. Not what I'm looking for. And these are the big containers. That's what they look like when they're new. The ones that I have my bamboo and gingers in. Is there a name on here? I don't know. I don't see a name on here. Frost, something, pottery, Vietnamese. They're Le Beau. Le Beau. Le Beau. I don't know the model, just know that it's Le Beau. Okay, well, I guess one is better than nothing. I can grab the one at least. Oh, the zinnias. I love the zinnias. Have to resist. A little bit too early, and man, I have so many issues with powdery mildew with 
zinnias once we hit like September and there's not as much sun on the patio. So pretty though. That's the reason I haven't been growing zinnias these last few years. Actually, it was just because, well, what's the point? They keep getting powdery mildew. No matter where I put them, no matter how much airflow I make sure they get, just rot away every single time. Where I get into trouble with the begonias. Didn't come here for plants. I'm not saying plants aren't going to happen, just it's not, not the intention. Okay, got the one. It's better than nothing. Doesn't this look better? Missed a few spots. Still some stuff that's going to work its way out for underneath the seats. It worked quick too. That only took like two or three minutes. Whew. And I had to leave the car running while I was in there because of the battery. And I, hadn't, I don't think I'd driven far enough from home yet to recharge it. There's a police station right around the corner and the car was at no point like any further than maybe 20 yards away. It was always in my sight. Not that I would do anything if I saw someone trying to steal the car. I'd probably just be like, yeah, okay. I don't everything valuable in there. So if they have cameras, file report, all that stuff. Okay, off to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. I don't know, wherever I end up. Also, disclaimer, I need to put this at the beginning of when I'm driving around. I'm never looking at this thing while I'm driving and talking at the same time. So sometimes the shots are all messed up, but you know, safety, right? 6.7. I don't know if that was enough to recharge this thing, but I guess we're going to find out. I will not be leaving the car on here. Definitely not. I'm at a different Lowe's. Not the one that I usually go to. I have the charger in case the battery does die and just the, all the lights that are on in there. It's just that, I don't know. Nobody knows why everything's fine. They just go on sometimes. Pink Princess Luna, lots of gingers, some little echinaceas, not a lot, but I think more than the other one. I haven't been going to that other one all that much lately, just because the selection. There hasn't been anything, even though I'm not here for plants. Gosh, these Coreopsis are huge. Lil Bang Darling Clementine Coreopsis. These are gigantic. Love those. Nice big Portulacarias. Those are nice too, seeing some fun vinca. I'm really appreciating how much vinca I'm seeing everywhere this year because they're such sturdy and resilient plants and they're so beautiful. It's just everywhere, everywhere I go, trailing vinca, which is funny because some of y'all down in Florida keep telling me you can't find it anywhere. Not that that's funny, I don't, not like, haha, you can't find the plants, but it's just, that's weird to me because I think that they would be so much more common the further south you go. Oh, these Asclepias look pretty nice too really nice and full plants and they're only $7.98. Oh, that's tempting. I already have a few, but it's always nice to plant more milkweed for the butterflies, right? I'm gonna think about that. Oh, these macho ferns are looking nice. These things are big. Well, they're always big. I don't know why I'm seemingly surprised about that, but I just love them. That big glossy foliage. Some good succulents up there too. Plenty of ferns. They pulled through the heat spell. Triple digits and dry air, dry-ish compared to usual. They look pretty good. All right, I have to ask, why, why, why? What's the appeal here? I don't get it. That's a genuine question. Let me know. I'm wanting to understand the reasoning behind buying grass that looks dead. I don't understand that. I love Manhattan, you want this. Beautiful euonymus. Nice big glossy green foliage. Pretty evergreen here in zone six. What am I looking for? Oh, sand. I ain't ten bags ought to do it. These ficus loratas. Of course, I have a bum cart. Doesn't work apparently if you have heavy things on it. 50% off. I don't I think you'd have to do better than that. I think. Much, much better than that. That's a that's a sad looking ficus lorata. One of the entire stems on it's dead. Very chocolate. That is a nice one. Dark foliage, flowers similar to the spinderella. I really like the spinderellas. Planted one at a family member's house in the early summer and it's just looking great. I'm definitely a fan of that one. Tons of gingers. I don't, I don't dislike them but every time I see them I'm just like but why not heliconias? Like why these? They're beautiful and everything. Nothing wrong with these. Beautiful plants. Just totally different vibe. And it's like, if you're doing this, you can do the same thing with heliconias. Ooh, ooh. Cart just rammed right into me. 
I like the white. I don't like hibiscus with the eyes in the middle ever. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference thing. But I like the white. Now, don't know why it would bother buying that when you can just get a Rose of Sharon with white flowers on it, a hibiscus Sarah Cruz that will be perennial. I got a hibiscus. I wasn't planning on getting more plants, but the sclepius and the hibiscus, it has cute little flowers on it. You can't tell. I'll show you later, maybe, if I remember. I'm home in a few hours, waiting for things to cool off a little bit. It was getting pretty sticky and miserable out here, so thought it would be best to just chill in the house for a bit. For the sun to move and get off of the patio, and mostly off of the driveway. Now, gonna get this all loaded up and see if I can't use these to stand the palm trip. I know you're probably wondering why uh, these are not like sandbag sandbags and it's just because this is what, it's what was easiest to find. That's all. No special rhyme or reason. It's just this is what was available so this is what I got. That's all there is to it. Yeah, there it is. There's all kinds of stuff that's blown around over here. I haven't really picked up from the storms. I just, well, I moved this out of the way. This and the Roblini palm were laying right here in front of the door on top of the Moose of Florida. Also knocked over these seashell planters. Not great, but we'll get to it. And it uprooted the croton. I got it back down in there, but I think I'm gonna have to stake this the way that that's ended up flopping over. And then with this one, yeah. I'm gonna stand it up, pile up sandbags around and we'll see what happens with it. Hopefully it stays up. Palm trees up. I'll show you in a minute. Losing light though. So when I get these moved to the driveway, I can open up the view over here and actually get to look around the corner and, and you know, not have plants sitting on the patio. Hey, oh, that's not turbo. <laughs> I think where my, I thought that was turbo. That's the pool vacuum. Okay. Defogged yet? It looks pretty good. Yeah, it, it got dark out. Much darker than it looks. Picture might be a little bit grainy, but that's all right. This is a working video, not a cinematic one. This looks better. In the morning, I'd like to come in here and prune out all of these bikini teeny colocasias. They're not supposed to be here. Those things run in, I'm guessing, reseed all over the place. I don't want them on the edge of the garden. And come in and clean up all this dead stuff from the wintertime, the needle pump. And really, I think the bananas, these could use a lot of pruning, right? The storms did plenty of damage on them. And I think it would be nice to come in and get everything that got blown down flat out of there and open things up. Let some air move around inside of the plants. The main thing is that this right here, that's so nice. Those didn't need to be there. Those are gone. I just haven't moved them yet because there's been construction stuff piled up where they're supposed to go. So I just, I didn't feel like getting around to moving all the stuff that I had to to get them over there. And I had to run a new drip line. So that's out here. Doesn't look great, it's just tossed out. I'll try and get that looking better here sooner than later. It's just wrapped around the, it looks terrible. It was a makeshift thing. So it was just like, get this done very quickly and got it done, but that's not how it's going to stay. I'll get it tucked away and looking better. The hose, you know, they have to kind of sit in the sun for a while to get the coil out of them, but they're uncoiled now looking better. This is just, oh, there will have been a garden tour out before this. I don't need to explain this that's just storm in case you didn't watch the garden tour if there was a storm and now that's like that yeah, in general the bananas need to be cleaned up and need to get them open what i really need to do in the morning i'm not looking forward to this i need to change out the sprinkler head because the top popped off of it and usually i can just snap it back on there but it just keeps blowing off i tried welding glue and all different things too much pressure so i need to dig up that sprinkler head and get that replaced because this stuff isn't looking great because it's freaking hot outside and they haven't been getting watered clean out all the bikini teenies that are in here and get the bananas pruned up so that these can get some light because they're overgrowing in that area and some of these over here are looking kind of cooked so i'm probably just going to cut those down this is good doesn't seem like much but it's one of those things where each task had a lot of steps involved that i didn't drag y'all along for if it didn't always seem necessary that probably would have been kind of boring to be like hey watch me clean up construction stuff from the driveway nah and the sun was directly like in the lens and my eyes that would have been helpful this it doesn't look great but it's getting the job done at least i think it is time will tell yeah i can pull on it and then still has a wobble to it. Remember the bottom of that pot has a curve in it. 
That's why it doesn't sit flat. So I have it pushed back with a wedge underneath it to help stabilize it so it doesn't roll around anymore. And I think this is working. I'm going to give it a few days, see if I might need to put a few more over here and bring them out just a smidge further. Then I'm going to drape like a nice old piece of fabric or something over the sandbags and then it'll just that'll look great it's cheaper than buying a new pot i don't it's just that's not happening this year there have been way too many other unexpected expenditures landscaping wise I'm not going to be doing all that especially when this is the one that needs the repot it's definitely outgrown that container and i already have the pot for that one i was only able to get two bags of soil at the store that'll have to do i don't i don't know if i'm gonna get around to repotting a queen palm this video we'll see probably not this is a very not a busy week a very busy couple of days these are all smashed from the store like i said i think we'll talk about all the storm damage in the garden tour so don't need to hang up on that here's what i got at the store y'all saw the asclepius it's a nice one it's nice and full feels like it has a firm base. I'd already picked up several of these from the local nurseries, but I always like to plant a few more. And then I don't, I don't know why I bought this. I mean, I bought it because it's cute. Of course, since it's dark out, the flowers have closed up. It's just a double flowered orange uh, hibiscus, Rosa sinensis. Something that you can normally buy as a bush or as a tree for like 25, 30 bucks. And I don't, I was a sucker. I paid like 15 bucks for this tiny one. I just saw it and I was like, it's so cute. I don't know why I did it other than it's really cute. I need to cut the top off of that banana tomorrow too. The storm flattened that thing out when the palm trees fell on it. What else? Just want to make sure I have things tied up for the evening before calling it a night. I think that that's it actually. I don't know. It's getting dark, so I don't know how much more I'd be able to film while I'm out here. I'm not going to go in and do pruning and trying to dig holes where I need to find a line while it's dark. I can do all that in the morning. They're getting new siding. They're having something done either to their pool. I don't know, something to their backyard. They're having a pool put in. So the noise has been intense, like really intense. And I just tried to not film during it. But last week, it was a whole new level. So that's why I wanted to get started filming over the weekend so there'd be some more quiet. Now the rest of the video, things might be really loud. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how I'm going to get the garden tour filmed. It's like, just, I'll film it in the evening. I could do that. That's not a big deal. Probably not this late in the evening, but you know what I mean. Thinking out loud here, I love the way the light plays off of everything. It looks so nice. Also, I heard you about the... No, nope, we'll talk about that in the garden tour. See the pots? That's what I wanted two more of, but they had the one, and that's fine. Hopefully they'll have more of them next year, but I wanted to have two more. One to put here and one to put there. Stuff like a couple ferns and them, something like that. I don't know. They had the next size up from these too, which I've thought about for a minute, maybe grabbing those. Then I'd be able to have a trio of pots right here, but they were 130 bucks a piece. You went up to the next size. That would have been like $300 more than that after tax because the sales tax around here, outrageous. Although I don't know in that county if it's quite as bad. The, the, you get the point. That, that's not happening. Not necessary. I think that this looks fine right there. How does, oh, some of the lights came on. Not all of them, but some of them. This thing keeps falling down. I'm gonna have to get a hook to hold that up. I think I talked in the video, I did, in the video about these, how one of the strands turns on way, way, way earlier than the other, which is annoying. I don't understand why they do that, but they do. 20 minutes, this other one will turn on too. Oh, I got these solar powered rocks and they're not very bright, but I also haven't given these a chance to charge. They've just been hanging out underneath the umbrella. I was thinking about putting these over here like that. No, that does nothing. That was stupid. That was a waste. I'll find a better place to put those. I was about ready to call tonight, but then I remembered that I was supposed to show the different colors on these string lights at the end of the last vlog and I just I forgot to do it. So since it's dark and we're out here, you can go ahead and do that. It's just not, you're not going to do it. Well, nothing. Try auto. Why? Why? Come on camera. Put it right here, right against the sensor. Nothing. I think it's time for a new camera. Okay, so uh, this is number one on the remote. Now I pressed the wrong button. There we go. Nothing's happening. Is the remote already broken? One, one, one. Do I have to hold it like right up against the, come on. Okay, I don't, the remote, it, it doesn't work. So I'll set y'all up on the tripod while I just push the button. There's a little green button you can push. Just a heads up for people who are sensitive to flashing lights. There's gonna be a lot of that going on. I'll put music up while I'm going through these different lights and turn the music off when it's over or you can just scroll through the uh, time bar down below and 
skip right over this. Okay, there was a reason I didn't link any of the products from that video, and it was because I wasn't impressed with any of them. I mean, they're okay, but mine wasn't blown. Is that just, okay, so that one changes colors between various whites with some green, okay, so it just washes through everything very slowly, a slow wash. I don't mind that. The next one, it's the same, but faster and much less smooth. Okay, hey, there we go. That's awesome. Who wouldn't want that on their, sh oh, is it voice? I stopped talking and it kept doing it, so I don't know if it's voice. It would probably be doing it based off of the water, I would imagine, right? Okay, let's try the next one. Same thing. Yeah, who wouldn't want that? That's just, that's beautiful. Oh, this is a slow fade of the different colors. All right, I don't hate that. That's a faster fade between all of the colors. Is this back to just solid? Nope, it's not. It's still changing colors. How about now? Are we back to just being solid? It took me a long time to get it before where it just stayed on the one color. There we go. None of those are very impressive and I don't know why you would want them on string lights, but that, that's just me. I don't know, you do you. Maybe you want weird stroby effects with string lights. I thought they were all pretty annoying. It's going for somebody who really enjoys colorful lights and light shows, but not, not this, that, that's stupid. The patterns are weird. They don't make sense to me. There's something where they would trickle and chase. That would look awesome, but none of them did that. It was mostly just various speeds of blinking and flashing, which is annoying for something that's supposed to be a wall. Yeah, not my favorite string lights, but they work. Just having a solid background. So I didn't really care about having something that does effects. There we're, we're all caught up on that now. Now it's time to go inside, take a shower, get cleaned up so I can wake up and come out here and just get absolutely filthy again in the sun. Good morning, or it's a few seconds later. Been waiting for the noise to die down. Don't think it's gonna happen. In that meantime, working on the drip, making some adjustments with some things, charge the fan up to keep the camera cool. Did a little bit of fertilizing. I talked about how they stopped selling my favorite mixer, which was the Jack's Classic mixer, J.R. Peters. I liked it because it was very simple to use. You had just a few settings on top, which was full dose, quarter, half, something along those lines, which I liked because I could just put my fertilizer in here, and then when I would be out here fertilizing, if I got to a plant like, say, an aeroid, I just flip the little dial on the top down to quarter strength. That will suffice for that plant that doesn't want a full strength fertilizer, and then as I move over to the plants that want the full strength, I just flip it right back up top. I loved that. It didn't make me do math. How accurate it was and how well it worked, I don't know, but the sprayer itself worked for several years, but not anymore, it's broken. So I went ahead and decided to give the wet dry from Shape, Chap, Chapin, Chapin. These guys a try, common brand, been around for a long time, decent reviews online. The fertilizer that I'm using is really meant for large volumes. So I had some trouble figuring out my ratio, but I think what it came down to was a tablespoon per gallon. The directions weren't really all that clear as to which number means what, because you can do wet or dry, meaning you can put liquid in here and that will just fill the basin, or there's a basket on the inside you put your granular fertilizer, which is what I'm using. There's a different feed rate with those. It's not, not clear as to which number means what. I also gave this the first go the same day that I was putting together the glider and a bunch of other things were going on, so I'll give the directions another pass and see if it does say in there. Very likely that I just missed it. I know the first time that I used this, I completely overlooked that part of the directions and I just eyeballed it and I was like, okay, well, this goes up to 36. This goes up to six ounces, 12 tablespoons or 36 teaspoons, which I just realized that those numbers, those are just, that's all the same thing. So th th none of that matters. Forget everything I said about not being sure about which number means what, I just figured that out. But since it went up to 36, I was like, well, I'll just split the difference and just stick it right in the middle. And then I got out the calculator and broke down how much I should be using of the fertilizer that I'm using per gallon of water. And it was between one ounce or to go all the way down to just one tablespoon, three teaspoons, which is like the, what, the second to lowest setting on here? Yeah and I was all the way up in the middle. So some of the plants got a little over-fertilized. They seem okay, they're, 
and some wonky growth coming out of a couple of them, but they'll push through it. They'll be fine. Stop making me do math when I fertilize my plants. I don't appreciate it. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. I, it's in the background, so maybe I should address it. I was repotting some aeroids, and I don't have a lot of aeroids. So unlike with my potting soil where I will buy things in bulk and blend up my own thing just with a base of a normal just miracle grow soil and add to it to turn into what I perceive as a very nice soil. The plants seem to enjoy it. With the aeroids, I'm not doing all that. I have in the past when I'm repotting a lot of things at one time, but if I just have like three plants need to be repotted, I'll go ahead and spend the $15 for a blend that's already put together for me. It's what was on sale. It's the Newt stuff. They're all over the internet. I'm sure they're owned by Liquid Dirt. Notice they're not making any dramatic claims on the bag, so I'm not mad about it, but it just says Newt infused husk plus rescue mixes. What the hell does that mean? And there's no elaboration on the back, it just says a combo of our most popular soil replacements blended together. Plants in their perfect growing medium without making a mess. That's just, that's just aeroid mix. I guess that's their way of saying buy this instead of mixing your own. No need for more additives. Why? Doesn't say anything else on here about that. Inspect roots without plant stress. Why? Doesn't say anything on here about that. Repot with less effort. I don't, be, I assume because you're not blending up your own stuff and making a mess around the house. I don't know. Not ripping on them. I just, there have been claims on other products in the past where I have just kind of been one of those people where I'm like, I like to see data with big claims. You know, anecdotal stuff, that's not always a bad place to kick things off. But I just want to make sure that y'all know if this isn't a promotion. It's not saying this is a favorite brand, nothing like that. Just didn't feel like blending up my own stuff to repot three little plants. It's what I could find that was nearby and not very expensive. And it's not bad stuff. I've used it when I've repotted other aeroids. Coconut, chunks, husk, fiber, perlite, and I think the fifth ingredient is their blend of various micro rice. I, I, I don't know. I did look online, they break it down better as to what that means when it's their infused blend, but you know, if something's infused, it's like, okay, how's that done with shipping? Has it been stored properly? This doesn't mean a ton to me. I just wanted the chunky airiness and that's, that's all that's about. Okay, what is it? What am I supposed to be doing right now? Pruning, that's what's going on. Need to clean up the bananas. And the colo caseas, cause they're just, they're looking sad. Okay, got the loppers, hand pruners, and then of course, machete. Like that's a pretty good start with the bananas. I really usually use more of the loppers. They're set back in the garden, not always the easiest to get to a tripod swinging. Oh, so much noise. It's never fun when a storm comes in and damages the plants. Uh, this needed to be done anyway, so not really all that big of a deal. Oh, these need to be sharped, sharped. These need to be sharpened. Why is the camera not pointed towards what I'm doing over here? It wasn't all that well thought out. Okay, yeah, you know, actually maybe going by hand might be easier. Turbo, dang it. There we go. Just doing that alone, so much better. Get things opened up in here. Get all the brown stuff out. Open things up down below. Try and figure out how I'm gonna get to the ones that are all the way in the very back here. Uh, that is much better. Banana, little banana. Bananas are still looking thirsty and sad. That's probably gonna be the case for a few days. That storm really did a number on them. Working my way down. Colocasias. Oh, and weeds, random weeds. Open one thing up and then all of a sudden you can see everything that was going on underneath it. It's kind of fun and satisfying. I know it looks violent. It's almost like snapping beans, you know, go and give them a good tug. Get all those tips taken out. We should just try and pull these up. I don't really know why I'm bothering with that. I don't want these to grow here. I need to just pull them up, get them out. Hey Turbs, you think you're being a helper? You're not, you're just standing right in front of me, but good thing you're cute, we'll let it go. I'm going to prune the heck out of this needle palm and get all this dead stuff out of here. Well, most of the dead stuff. The thing with needle palms is these grow like snails, so they're only going to put up a few new branches every year, a few new fronds, that is. So if I were to cut off everything, then there really wouldn't be anything left on the plant. But I feel like if I just get the 
stuff off the outside that's hanging over the patio and the brown stuff that's down there on the inside that's better than nothing. And overall, I think it'll just look better not having a plant scoring over the edge of the patio here. Okay, that is much better. Look, you can see the edge of the patio again. Come in here and actually get that dug back out, blow the deck off, that'll look a lot better. Not that it really matters because the crinum lilies are hanging over the rest of it. And then same thing for over here, except now it's just time to get the front of the bed cleaned up so we can see the sun impatience. Everything's starting to grow through there. I already pulled a whole bunch out a few days ago. But you can see from over here, not enough. There's so much more I can pull out. Allow some more light to get down here to these plants. You can see where they haven't been getting all that much. And all those weeds. All those weeds that were popping up underneath the ones that were here that I pulled off. Those are the ones that I pulled up off camera. Oh, this is satisfying. I love pulling weeds. Mostly when they're larger weeds like that, it feels so good to pull a nice big weed out of the garden. All these little mustards or nettles, whatever they are, not as much a fan of pulling those. Hey Tobes, doesn't that look so much better? With the nice clean line back, having things cut back and pulled back from the patio, getting the garage, what do they call it? Driveway, the driveway containers, the peaches moved out and then opening up the base of the banana trees. Transformative. Needs to allow some airflow in there because I discovered that all of the bikini teenies down there, not all, most of them, they have spider mites. Despite sprays and my efforts, still have spider mites. So I pulled all the foliage off and next to my, just, I'm just using soap and neem. Doing my best to keep it off of the flowers, of course. Uh, I need to up the soap because the problem is the spray just ripples right off of the foliage on these. Repellent, they repel water very, very well. Get off of there, I'm using one hand. I really don't understand how there's heavy machinery stuff still going on. When this pool got put in, that was like two and a half weeks of it, although they haven't really been here, so maybe they're still in the two and a half week time frame. The banana, it's, it got smashed. Palm tree fell on it during the storm. Not the end of the world. In fact, really not even that big a deal because I needed to let some more light in down here for some hedichiums that I planted. Okay, I need to sharpen the machete and I'm using my left hand, but you just, little swift cut, boom, done. It'll push out a new, it'll push out a new leaf right from the middle like nothing ever happened. Okay, now time to handle trash and recycling and fix my repotting mess that I've had set up over here to get everything repotted over these last few weeks. That's probably it for today. I know it doesn't seem like that much, but there's just so much noise and I still, I gotta film the garden tour today so that I can spend all day tomorrow editing it. It's not gonna be like a drastic improvement. I'm still gonna leave some of the stuff over here, but there are some piles of things for recycling and things that just need to be put away, some yard waste. I think this is much more exciting. That looks so much better. God, it's so noisy. Oh, and the floors just got delivered, so I need to take care of that. Hey baby, oh, still a little bit foggy. That's surprising. Been out here for quite a while. I'm gonna wipe this off. Not the best way to do things. Don't always get the most clear picture when I use a shirt I've noticed. Maybe it's from fabric softener. I don't know. It's the next two days, not two days, like 30 hours later. I'd film the garden tour, get that edited. You know, it takes a day, day and a half, something like that. <laughs> and um, it rained all day, which is fantastic. We needed it, definitely needed it. A nice long rain instead of where it just be like lightning and thunder and wind and then a couple of minutes of rain, if even. Got a nice soak that went on for several hours. So I didn't have to water today. That was very nice. Plants are kind of perking up, looking a little bit more clean. Some more of the dust being washed off of them. Over here, this is what's impressive. Check out these bananas. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So in the video prior to this one, the garden tour, I showed these and said, hey, it's only been a few hours since I cut that and this green part right here had started to come up. And here we are the next day from that. This one has a whole new leaf shooting up there and this one's already got, well, look at the size of that. Like I said, day and a half, not even a day and a half. That's why I said if there's any plants that I ever want to take storm damage, it's bananas. They can take it. They rebound so incredibly quickly. Well, he's having a good time. He's having a great time. Yep, you better get that water. Surprised that I needed to put water in this thing today. That's a little bit odd. Can keep my eye on that, considering it rained so much. Although it was really hot just a few days ago, or the beginning of this video, you know, triple digit temperatures. That's totally different. I have the heater on <laughs> for the pool. Things are just all over the place this summer. Also, another question, Yano. Yes, that was this video. I've edited everything up until the point of today. 
Well, I talked about this stuff. I hadn't tried this blend yet. Usually if I'm going to order an Aeroid blend, if I just don't feel like mixing up my own, I do it on Etsy because I prefer to support a smaller company or an Etsy seller. This is a situation where I needed it right then and there because I had just gotten some plants in from Equigenera. If y'all notice that this stuff, if you've used it, holds on to like no moisture at all. Or is that just me? The Vici I set out here in the rain all day and I was looking at it and it just looked bone dry and I pulled some of the bark back bone dry. I had to sit it underneath the shower here for like two minutes to really soak it. And uh, that's not the end of the world. I oftentimes add sphagnum moss into my aeroid mixes because it helps with some moisture retention, which, you know, is something you need to do if you love a place where you have dry air. Mostly during the winter, that's an issue. Not so much during the summertime. But uh, if I have to add to it, I don't, like, why, why am I ordering a premix? That doesn't make any sense. But I think I may have to pull that out. Possibly all the aeroids that I repotted, pull them out and add to them. That's a shame. Big old waste of money. I came out here to drill a hole in this pot because the, the <laughs> hibiscus isn't a self-watering pot and uh, they had already done it. Doesn't happen very often. It was a nice surprise to see that they had already done that. Surprise there isn't more water in there. The displacement seems off because the pot sits like all the way down here, but the hole's up there. I don't know. I'm not likely to keep it in that container anyways. I think that that's going to go into an arrangement of some kind here and not too long for some stuff I'll be doing over here by the door area. Well, the end set <laughs> right here on the very end, it's starting to stand up a little bit more than it was at the beginning of this video, which was a few days ago, so that's good. Wasn't sure how that was going to work out. I still think I'm going to end up throwing a stake on that just to be safe. And I just got a bunch more of these in the mail. I'm going to get those opened up. Probably just going to do a separate video on those. The past couple of weeks, the Wednesday videos have been much longer than usual. I guess the list, the 25 list, wasn't necessarily a long video. Y'all don't even care about any of this. This is my way of saying I think we're done here. I had some repots that I was thinking about doing, but uh, it's so hazy and cloudy. And the video's already at least 40 minutes long, and the one prior to this was an hour long. But then I just wrap it up. I know some of y'all enjoy the long content, but also don't want to overstay my welcome. It'd be good for not all the videos to be insanely long for the people who don't like long videos. Although I'd say that ship has sailed with 40 minutes. I saw that. I saw that you're just petting yourself on the heliconia. I caught him rubbing up against one of these pots the other day after he got out of the pool. It really reminded me of Tucker. He's starting to do the dognado thing. That's a throwback to my old dog. If you don't know, he passed away in 2020. But he'd get out of the pool, he would run around these pots, knock all the flowers off and make a huge mess. But it was so cute. He just had the best time rubbing himself on the edges of the containers. He was also a good 40 pounds lighter than Turbo and quite a bit shorter. Don't know about the 110 pound lab run around these pots. 50 pounds. He's 50 pounds lighter. Jeez. Forget sometimes this dog's part moose. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, Turbs. Oh, look at how bouncy and happy everything is. Bouncy isn't the word. I was going to say erect, and I know how that would have gone over. You know, when the plants are freshly hydrated after all that rain, it's just there's such a difference between hand watering and a nice good drench from the rain. The, I, maybe it's in my head. I don't think it is. You can tell a difference, right? That's not just me, is it? Maybe it's just partially because so much of the stuff gets washed off of everything. It's been so dusty out here. All right, well, I had a good week. Feels good to have the edge of the garden cleaned up to get those patio pots put away some new drip lined up not fully set up but lined up and ready to be finished up on i mentioned that the floors were delivered they need a couple weeks to acclimate but that means that the guy who's going to be building out this whole area here should be on that in the next few weeks and get some planters done and get that area fixed up too this guy's been patiently waiting for me all day he wants to get in there so i was gonna say swim laps but he doesn't swim laps with me he attacks the fountains those fountains that stick up from here those are so that when i'm on my back I know when I'm about to come to the edge and not hit my head. He just kind of hangs out and attacks the water and seems to enjoy himself an awful lot while I go back and forth. Occasionally he'll do a lap or two with me, but not very much. He just wants to play. Like, where do you go? It amazes me how a dog that big can just vanish into the garden. <laughs> All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. The sun, look, the sun's about to come out. It doesn't matter. I'm about to turn the camera off. and It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Hopefully things are going well. It's been a stormy 
week for a lot of people. Hopefully everybody's gardens are doing okay. And homes, uh, homes, houses, that's probably top priority. Oh, look at you peeking out from all the way up here. Not getting much light up there. Wouldn't you rather be down here with your friends? If that's too much. Don't need to talk to the plants that much. I'm like a crazy person. Any buds? Any buds? I keep checking these. I thought that there was mealybug on there. It's just bird poop. Now I need to go wash my hands. Not yet. It's interesting to me that all four of these growths on this purpurata, the, this is a pink shell ginger, that all of them have just been hanging out like this, like this crazy lizard tail. For like the past week, they reached the same height and then they just stopped. I don't under... So why? Why'd they do that? These down here are still growing, but those over there, they're like, okay, we're good here. And I don't think they are because I believe these are supposed to get four to five feet, even six feet before these little flowers. Y'all still got some work to do. Get on it. I said, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day. Great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, I, this is when I'm supposed to cut to the keep on growing part, but isn't that, come on. What a gorgeous plant, right? Keep on growing. Bye-bye.